Around the world, the press plays a vital role in informing the public on issues and events that affect them. It's a deliberate attempt by those in authority to clamp down on the journalists specifically to see that they are intimidated in terms of how they carry out their profession. Overall, only 3% of sub-Saharan Africans have access to a free media, 14% have access to a partly free media, and 41% live in countries where the media is not free. What we think we are doing is to help the government. But if they are targeting us, it means they are not ready for a change. The commitment to freedom of expression is being watered down in the discussions. Human development in the coming decades will depend on people's access to information. Glad to have you back again on Press Freedom in Africa. This is African Free Press Radio, and I am Chiadiko Bitasie. The veil of insecurity in Nigeria, especially in some geopolitical zones, is gradually building to the situation whereby too many Nigerians are thinking of security instead of opportunity. Recently, the devil robbers attacked and robbed the managing director and editor-in-chief of the Sun newspapers, Mr. Eric Osage at Surulere area in Lagos on his way to his residence from work. Mr. Osage's car was riddled with bullets while the door was forced open as the robbers made away with his bag which contained cash and his international passport as well as other valuables. However, the media community is grateful that the life of Mr. Osage was spared. Following the development is good news. Two Al Jazeera journalists who were jailed in Egypt, namely Mohamed Fami, a Canadian, and Beha Mohamed, an Egyptian, have been freed after receiving pardons from President Abdul Fattah al Sisi. The two journalists were among the hundred prisoners whose release was ordered based on a state pardon. Prosecutors have accused the two journalists for collaborating with the outlawed Muslim Brotherhood after the overthrow of President Mohamed Morsi by the Egyptian military in the year 2013. We shall go on a short break. When we return, we shall take a look at Africa's most censored nation that threatens jail terms and restricts internet to silence the press. It's a deliberate attempt by those in authority to clamp down on the journalists specifically to see that they are intimidated in terms of how they carry out their profession. Overall, only 3% of sub-Saharan Africans have access to a free media, 14% have access to a partly free media, and 41% live in countries where the media is not free. For repressive regimes to keep their grip on power, they use a combination of media monopoly, harassment, spying, threats of journalist imprisonment, and the restriction of journalists' entry or their movements within their countries. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, CPJ, Eritrea is an African nation notorious for being the most censored country worldwide, where the press is most restricted. In Eritrea, President Isaiah Afewaki has succeeded in creating a campaign which is aimed to crush independent journalism and has also created a media climate which is so oppressive that even reporters for state-run news outlets continue to live in constant fear of arrest. The threat of imprisonment has led many journalists to choose exile rather than risk arrest. Eritrea is Africa's worst genre of journalists, with at least 23 journalists who spend time behind bars, of which none has been tried in court or even charged with a crime. Fearing the spread of Arab Spring uprisings, the Eritrean government cancelled its plans in the year 2011 to provide mobile internet for its citizens. They also limited the possibility of access to independent information. Although, as of recent, 
internet is available, but it is through slow dial-up connections. According to the UN International Telecommunication Union, less than 1% of the Eritrean population goes online. On a global scale, Eritrea also has the lowest figure of cell phone users, with just 5.6% of the population possessing cell phones. In our subsequent edition, we shall focus on Ethiopia, which ranks as the second most repressive nation of the press in Africa, and which also happened to rank number four on the global listing of the Committee to Protect Journalists, CPJ. I still remain Chadiko Vitasie. For more information, we urge you to visit www.africanfreepress.com and also remember to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at African Free Press. Expect us same time next week. Around the world, the press plays a vital role in informing the public on issues and events that affect them. It's a deliberate attempt by those in authority to clamp down on the journalists specifically to see that they are intimidated in terms of how they carry out their profession. Overall, only 3% of sub-Saharan Africans have access to a free media, 14% have access to a partly free media, and 41% live in countries where the media is not free. What we think we are doing is to help the government. But if they are targeting us, it means they are not ready for a change. The commitment to freedom of expression is being watered down in the discussions. Human development in the coming decades will depend on people's access to information.